Greetings one and all, Fennec here, back with another video, and today, it's a computer related video. As I said in my last video, I was going to think about doing some computer hardware related videos, and today, we dug out the oldest GPU I could find that I own, currently own, and that is the 2600 Pro, released by ATI, aka AMD, released all the way back in June of 2007. I'm sure it's going to be a beast of a card. Totally. Specifications of thus said beast of a card include 120 shading units, 8 TMUs and 4 ROPs, a blazing fast 512 megabytes of DDR2, yes DDR2 RAM, not even DDR3, power draw is only 35 watts, meaning there's no external things you need to plug into it, and our DirectX support API level is 10. Most games need 11 these days, but you can still get around with 10 on some games, hell even 9 in terms of like TF2 and everything. But to truly show the power of this card, or possibly lack thereof, we're going to compare it with a card that's already starting to show its age very very badly, which is the 750. Not the TI model, but just the standard 750. And as to be expected, the 750 demolishes the 2600 Pro, but there's a huge age gap there so that's to be expected. But how does the 2600 game? And that's probably the part you've been waiting for, so let's jump straight into that. The games. How does this 16 year old graphics card perform in 2023? Starting off first was a platformer from 2017, Dead Cells. I kind of expected that this game would run well, but I just wanted to test it anyways. And I actually found myself playing this game forgetting that I was even recording, because it just ran so well. We're cutting a bit of our FPS using fraps, but it's minuscule compared to something like OBS, which is like destroys the FPS. So even with fraps running, it's perfectly playable. And without recording, we're getting around 50 on average. So a beautiful start for this card, even if it is a simple platformer. Beautiful stuff. Next up is everybody's favorite Steam and Valve game, Team Fortress 2. Now the engine on this game is pretty old, it uses DirectX 9, so it's no surprise that it ran pretty well, but we still had to lower the settings down to the possible lowest amount, and use 480p in terms of resolution. But that provided us with a playable experience. I honestly don't think this game looks too bad on 480p, some people might disagree if they've used like something super high end resolution wise, but hey, it averaged around the 40s while recording, sometimes dipping into the 30s, and while you're not recording, you'll easily get 40s to 50s. So, a beautiful experience. You just can't use anything really above 480p. So in my opinion, this gets the green mark in terms of FPS. Some people might disagree with that, but eh, it was playable. Now Roblox was an interesting one because it's not necessarily a game, it's more so a platform full of an immense amount of games. So. If you find a super simple game, sure, ran no problem on this GPU, but more demanding games, it started to tank the FPS. As you can see right here, the one I'm playing, it's starting to tank a bit more than the first one I just played. And if you find a super realistic one like this, it'll completely bring this graphics card to its knees. So it's an interesting one. I do believe it's a game that more GPU testers should play because it still has DirectX 10 support for now. But yeah, it's a variety of games on this platform, millions of games, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint, so I think it's acceptable putting it in the orange category in terms of FPS. Next up, everybody's second favorite blocky game, Minecraft, with the lowest possible settings and the resolution scaler set down to the lowest, which I think is actually a pretty cool addition because Minecraft didn't used to have that resolution scaler. That provided us with a decently smooth 30 FPS while recording, and when you're not recording you'll see around Still sometimes the 30s, usually the 40s in terms of FPS. It was a smooth experience all around, and I actually built this cute little castle. It was smooth enough to build and have some fun. But, what's a Minecraft test without a TNT test? Overall, this graphics card handles Minecraft pretty well. Not surprising, because it's a super simple game, but still... It is playable, it gets the green mark. And here we have it, the staple of every GPU test, Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V was a beautiful, beautiful slideshow 
of a game while testing on this graphics card. Once again, everything is set to the absolute lowest. And this time, 480p gave us some nice black bars on the side of the screen. Our average FPS was around 10 to 15 at the most FPS. Now, this doesn't even matter if you were recording or not. It's the same FPS recording or not. It's horrible. But since it's to be expected on this GPU, it made it funny. There's also a horrible inpu input lag problem, which made like the controls of the car like even more worse than my driving already. So it was beautiful overall. <laughs> Obviously, it gets the red mark, but it's still a meme of a test. Beautiful, beautiful. Next up was a game that put a little bit of a load off the GPU compared to the previous one, but still was a super demanding game overall. 2013's Tomb Raider ran, I'd say, beautifully on this card. Around a stable 30 or so while recording, and sometimes hitting a stable 40 to 50 while not recording. Everything was set to the lowest, but it was a very playable experience. There was no input lag problems like GTA, and I had fun. I played it for a little bit. Obviously, once you go back to your main graphics card, it's so much better, but still, I don't think the game looked too bad, considering the GPU and the fact that it's a 10 years old game. Overall, I'm inclined to put this game in the yellow category. I was tempted to put it in green, but I know there's going to be a lot of action later on in the game, and that's probably going to bring it down into the 20s, maybe even lower. But when a lot's not going on in terms of huge explosions or anything, the game runs at that 30 to 40, sometimes even 50 when you're not recording, so a great showing in my opinion. It gets the orange mark. Alien Swarm was up next, and honestly it's a game I forgot about up until I started recording for this video. It's a game that I used to play with my friends, and on this graphics card, FPS while recording hovered around, yeah, around the 30s, and when you weren't recording it stayed around the 30s to 40s. On a top-down game like this, the slightly lower FPS wasn't as noticeable, and I had an enjoyable experience. The FPS only really dipped when a lot was going on on screen. It would dip down into the 20s sometimes, high to mid 20s. But overall, I'd say I'd give this the orange mark. It doesn't get the green mark because same reason for Tomb Raider. When a lot of action is going on, it's going to dip a lot. But still, enjoyable. City Skylines was up next, and honestly at the beginning, I thought it was quite promising. FPS was around low 30s, mid 30s, around there. Sadly, the FPS overlay once again didn't work for City Skylines, I'm not sure why, but the moment you zoomed in, the FPS went straight down. It tanked, and also as you started to build anything with any sort of effort, the FPS went even lower, as you can see. <laughs> it turned into a really interesting slideshow. Not shocking, because obviously when you zoom in, there's a lot more detail, so it's expected that the FPS is higher when you zoom out, but yeah. Card did not like this game. Gets the red mark. Disappointment was up next. Nah, I'm just kidding. The game name is This Figure, and it's actually a completely free game on Steam that I would recommend if you have a halfway decent computer after 2010. Um, it's such a simple game that I honestly thought it would run pretty well, but with everything cranked to the lowest and like hardly no action going on, you get around 30 FPS. And when you're not recording, that's only maybe like 5 FPS better when you're not recording. Now that's not to say the game is completely unplayable, but the stuttering that can happen, like there's a weird stuttering problem in this game, it can get really annoying as the rounds start to heat up, because that's the whole point of this game. Just more and more insects go after you in the game, bugs and whatnot. And it, yeah, it kind of tanks the FPS. I won't put it in red, but it, it's a close one. Do get this game though if you have a good computer. It is tons of fun and it's completely free on Steam. Just not on a computer like this. Human Fall Flat was up next. Another game that me and my friends used to play. And it ran very, very stable. FPS wasn't high at all at the lowest settings. But it was super stable. There was no stuttering at all like GTA or Disfigure. So I'd almost call this playable to be honest. It really depends on um, what games you've played at what FPS. If you've always been used to high FPS, it might be unplayable to you. But once again, I'd call this playable. And that stable nature probably comes down to the fact that the game just made great utilization of the GPU. Once again, a wild guess, but I'd give this the orange grid in terms of 
how it passes. It was okay. And for our last game, it was VR Chat, everybody's favorite degenerate game. Now, after refraining from picking the most degenerate character possible, we hopped into a server that wasn't the most detailed thing. And similar to Human Fall Flat, it was a very consistent, stable FPS, but the FPS was still lower. And I'd put this in the red tier. It just was a little bit too low to be considered playable, in my opinion. The 20s is where I'd probably cut it, and it was under 20 most of the time. Um, honestly, though, it did run a lot better than I thought it would. But still, that doesn't really make it a playable or anything. But a great showing from the card. Sadly, still, I'd say red tier. And obviously, if you could figure out how to change the resolution, you could probably get a much better FPS. So, honestly, some people might debate putting it in orange tier. But, yeah. Unless I'm blind as a bat, I didn't see any resolution changer. And that was the story of one 16-year-old graphics card. I cannot thank you enough if you made it this far. Now this was my first computer hardware related video, so it certainly wasn't perfect, and won't have super fancy graphics, but for next time I'll work on doing better graphics and average FPS and everything. It's just, this card was really annoying when it came to running overlays. Half of them wouldn't work, at least a super old version of certain stuff, so yeah. Overall, the conclusion of this graphics card, it surprised me in some games, but obviously the age did show in other games, that's to be expected on a 2007 graphics card. Would I recommend it? No, for anything except a retro gaming computer. If you're in the market for a retro gaming computer, it can still do that very well. As you can see on screen, I'm running an older game from around 2003. Freelancer is the name. This thing can rip through older retro games from the 2000s up until probably around, well, 2007, maybe a little bit after. It does an okay job of that stuff. But for anything else, probably not. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Stick around, I have an even worse graphics card in the works. Stick around for that. Fennec, out. Have a good one.